as more and more Black Stars players keep trooping in, we have to prepare for that Brazil game on Friday. Uh, something interesting was posted on social media, yes. Uh, the ultimate Black Stars World Cup team. On the road to Qatar, a Twitter handle, official one at that, they posted a team of 11 players which they think in Ghana's history uh, would be the ultimate team to make it to Qatar 2022. And uh, it was interesting, one player that made a team that has gotten a lot of people talking, it was a bit of a surprise. We'll look at who that is. We're also going to talk about Kudus Mohammed, who granted an interview to NOS. Yes, he granted an interview to NOS on a couple of topics. He talked about how he has become an inspiration uh, to kids at Ride to Dream Academy and those coming up in the ranks of football. There was a video online of kids celebrating him in the Champions League after that performance versus Liverpool, albeit leading to a defeat, and uh, why he decided not to train uh, when he was pushing for a move. He explained it in detail. He was also asked why he does not celebrate his goals. He gave a condition when he would celebrate all that. As usual, subscribe if you have not. Click on the notification bell to get more updates. We'll jump right into it and we'll talk about the players who were included in that ultimate starting 11 for Ghana at the World Cup. But before then, you should know that players are in camp. You've watched that video by now, I'm sure. Who are in camp include Gideon Mensa as well as Alexander Jiku. I've given the list of them, but you can see them here on your screen. Nyake Williams and Tariq Lamte have been making the rounds on social media. Baba Idrisu is also in camp and they are ready to go. Now, this was the ultimate team posted by the Qatar uh, Twitter handle, the Road to Qatar Twitter handle. And all in all, it's not a bad team. But one name there which surprised me myself was Tariq Lamte. On what basis was Tariq Lamte included in this team? I was quite surprised by it. But all in all, it's a decent looking team. In goalkeeping position, and they have Richard Olele Kingston. He's the one of the best goalkeepers for Ghana. At the World Cup, he did immensely well. In the two World Cups he played in 2006, our maiden edition, and in 2010, uh, he was integral to us getting to the quarter final. Uh, 2014, he wasn't there. Uh, 2018, we were not there in totality. But Richard Olele Kingston was one of the main golden generation players that helped us get to the World Cup. Samuel Aseku for, uh, for the national team at the youth level was immense. He was a great player for Bayern Munich, a great uh, centre-back. I remember him playing centre-back most of the time, but this team will put, have put him in right back. Uh, so I think they wanted to switch Kari Tariq Lamte. They had to switch Tariq Lamte with Samuel Aseku for uh, we all make mistakes, so I think that's accepted. He played just in the 2006 edition when he was getting to the twilight of his career. Unfortunate for him, he could not play more World Cups with the Ghana national team. And as John Mensa, the Rock of Gibraltar, as he was popularly known, uh, was with the Ghana Black Stars as well. Another captain of the national team at the World Cup at one point in time. Tariq Lamte, who has not played for the national team yet, is included here. I don't know what basis or uh, the criteria they use. They are the only ones who can answer these questions for us. Uh, Tariq Lamte is now about to possibly make his debut for Ghana versus Brazil. So why is he being included in this team? I'll never know fully why. Uh, John Painsel, also another player at right back, uh, was great for us in that position. A great player for Ghana, Fulham, he played for in the Premier League. I enjoyed watching him. Steven Apia, Tornado, Steven Apia, captain of the Ghana national team. Another player who did immensely well when called upon to represent the country Ghana and he is in there rightly so. Sule Ali Muntari, another one who is here that I feel ultimately deserves to be here. Great Sule for the national team. Abedi Pele, who can mention Ghana football history without mentioning Abedi Pele? Unfortunate that during his time, he did not make it to the World Cup. Try as they did, they were all successful. Uh, Michael Essien, uh, Michael Essien, the Bison. He was at the 2006 World Cup. Uh, and at the 2010 edition, he could not make it. So just one World Cup for him. I think he was in 2014 World Cup as well, where the whole brouhaha happened. He played against Germany. 
Asamwajan Baby Jet, Ghana's highest goal scorer at the World Cup, high school scorer African at the World Cup, and Tony Eboa, one of the best strikers Ghana has had in our history. Also, could not make it to the World Cup himself. Eight of these players here were at the World Cup in their time. Uh, three of them, Tariq Lamte, Abedi Pele, and Tony Eboa. But the inclusion of Tariq Lamte surprised me a bit. I did not think he would make it into such a team. He has not kicked the ball for Ghana yet. So why is he here? Is he just to stay up conversation, get interaction, get engagement? Who would you have replaced Tariq Lamte with though? Let me know your thoughts in the comments box on this one. My final story has to do with Kudus Mohammed, who in an interview with Nos talked about a couple of things. We'll look at his uh, answers to the questions he was asked. First, we'll start off from his goal celebration. He usually does this with his goal celebration. He explained it. We'll look at what Kudus Mohammed had to say concerning that. For me, my personal reason for it is, is, is there's a lot of um, opinions and stuff that comes in, in our work. So it's just really strong on, 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 on stopping any negative stuff or anything coming to with, with the like, like a sword stopping anything coming. To, that's my um, understanding of it. We heard him there sort of like a shield protecting him from negative comments and uh, in his line of work and the criticisms that come in and all that when you are not doing well when you are doing well uh, you are ultimately the best person the best human being ever but when you are not doing well everyone wants to come at you come for you come for your head and get at you with their comments he said this is like a shield towards those comments and that is why he celebrates like that looking at how he's impacting currently with his form and everything he says he's an inspiration and what he is doing is something that players who are coming up can learn from so it gives him extra responsibility let's have a listen uh, to exactly his words on how he is influencing the upcoming generation there's a lot of um guys guys looking up to me and you can see how, how happy and smiles i put on their face just based on uh, my performance and how i give my best so for me i see it an inspiration for me to keep doing even more and telling them they can they can also do it and even do it better than i'm doing yeah so you heard him there talking about how he's influencing the upcoming generation in terms of uh, his play and doing well especially this season in the champions league he has been immense for his club also so talked about uh, why he did not train with ajax yes and the ajax in issue wanting a move out and everything he spoke about it and explained why he did not train with them let's have a listen to what he had to say Training. i guess there was an opportunity and then yeah i wanted to try it but it didn't happen but like i said that chapter is closed now i'm here now you played it hard because you you refused to train and wh why was that then not necessarily refused to train but there was a period where i spoke with the coach and i mean we are humans and there was a lot to deal with so not necessarily refusing to train but dealing with my emotional and my psychological part so it was really important to 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 take care of everything as possible as possible and then I came back to training and then we back to work. Issues he had to sort out, mental issues, spoke with the coach, they had issues, they ironed it out. Now he's playing regularly, he's proving himself. We'll see how well he does uh, for the club, how frequently he gets to play. I think right now he's undroppable, uh, so statement made for him. Uh, you heard him there, he talked about when he would celebrate and smile when he scores he hardly smiles you see that energetic fist bump and jumping up and down but hardly ever a smile these are the conditions kudus mohammed gave when he will smile and fist bump and jump up and down oh you don't it, smile it's 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 it's, it's bigger than just just celebrating a goal to me you know it's, it's just how deep is it how it's it just um applies to all aspects in my life you know and stick to your truth and what you believe in so that's basically why i do that is it maybe an idea when you score the next time in the arena that the dj of the arena starts a beat of stone boy yes i agree to that the 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 fame and strong song i think it will be perfect stone boys it's an icon in ghana and you will smile 
yeah i will smile <laughs> if you do that i'll smile so there you have it he wants that stone boy music at the stadium after he scores which dj will do that for him at the ajax arena uh, we'll see if that will happen but that is it there today talking about kudus mohammed's interview with nos where he talked about a plethora of things We've also been talking about that ultimate Ghana Black Stars team, the Dream Ghana World Cup team. Why is Tariq Lamptey in there? Who would you replace him with? Let me know your thoughts in the comments box on everything. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of the week.